Hello guys, today we have a Let's Play with Train Simulator 2014. We're doing the Be Prepared scenario with EMD SD 40-2. We're at Cajon Pass and we're actually at the Oro Grande Cement Factory. We've got to take, uh, we've got to cruise around the yard here and hook up a couple sets of uh, freight cars and get it ready to go to San Bernardino. It should take us about 15, 20 minutes to get through this scenario. It's a really good one to start uh, for people that are first starting out with Train Simulator 2014. It allows you to use the controls and get accustomed to coupling and stuff like that. So we'll give it a shot here. We're gonna back up here and hook up our first set and then we'll move through a couple of different sidings, use the switching capabilities and uh, take it from there. I like to keep it around three miles per hour or less when coupling, just to simulate real coupling. We don't want to damage the cars when we hook up to them by smashing into them too fast. So I like to simulate it as it would be in real life. There's a cement factory in the background there. Something just went by there on the left, you can hear it. Alright, so we got those hooked up. Now we're going to move to siding 3. And we can press 9 to see the 2D map, or you can use the control on the heads-up display down there to do that. 2D map is real helpful to get around the yard and know where all the switching points are. So you certainly want to get familiar with using the, the 2D map. So. We'll just scroll through here and check out where siding three is and what we need to change to get there. I'm using the Microsoft Xbox 360 USB controller uh, to control as well as the mouse. I like to use a combination of both. Um, I, I, I still haven't completely weaned myself off using a mouse yet. Uh, and there are certain controls that are just easier to do with a mouse, like switching between cameras quickly. You can toggle between cameras, but it goes in an in a ordered fashion with the uh, Xbox controller. Uh, I like being able to use the mouse and go to the exact camera that I want to see. Just makes it easier. And also small touches on braking or throttling. Um, you can do it with the triggers on the, S on the um, Xbox 360 controller. But I, I just like using the mouse sometime, sometimes as well. Maybe it's just a matter of habit. So for now it's a combination of the two. But I recommend getting the Xbox controller. It's like 35 bucks or something. You can get it on Amazon. It's a USB controller. 360 works with Windows. So we're going past the turnout here. We're going to stop, switch the turnout to siding three, back up, get those cars. Pretty simple. See those switches there you can actually if you're not familiar with it you can actually use your mouse and reach out grab those click and it'll turn the turnout here we go boom now that's switched and now i can just reverse back into siding three pick up those cars and we're ready to go Helps if I have it in reverse.
All right, so we give, should be good to go here. We'll throttle up, back into siding three, get those cars. Oops. Again, helps if I'm going in reverse. Here we go. While we're doing this, I want to make a plea to the Train Simulator 2014 folks that make this software. Please come out with a Macintosh version. I'm using this on a, on a PC that uh, is okay, but I really would like to have it on the Mac. I have a Mac system that has a higher uh, speed graphics card, and if it ran on the Mac, it'd be great. I was toying with the idea of getting VM Fusion uh, to run Windows on my Mac to see if this would work, if Steam would work in that environment. I'm not sure if it will. Probably have to do the research before I do that. But uh, that way it would use the graphics card on my Mac versus the one that I have on the PC, which is not as robust. Right now I film all these in 720p. If I was able to run it on my Mac, I could do it in 1080p. The graphics would be better and smoother, etc., etc. So um, maybe I'll try the VM Fusion experiment. But in the meantime, if you're listening, train simulator people, Railworks, how about the Mac version? That'd be awesome. Something's going by on the left there. Let's see. Union Pacific with some auto cars. Cruising by. So here we're backing up, getting ready to get the second set. I could probably go a little bit faster, but I like to take it slow and realistic. Just makes, for me, it's just, you know, why rush through it? How about a little bit of bell? See how long you can take the bell. So if you're considering Train Simulator 2014, I believe it's, it's uh, right now it's June 29th, uh, 2014. Check on Steam site. I think they're having a sale. It might be to the end of the month, not sure. But I think they're having a sale in the base 24, uh, Train Simulator 2014 package. Last I checked a couple days ago, they were having a sale, so you might want to check that out. Okay, we've got our second set here. Now we're going to go to siding one, get a larger set, and uh, move on to get ready for San Bernardino. You can see the cement loader there. Or is this coal? Might be coal. I guess it's coal. My mistake. All right, so we'll move forward here and uh, make sure that we're we're going to have to switch to get on siding one. So let's just see where it is. There's the trains we need to get, the freight cars that we need to get. So we're going to go up here. Once we get past the turnout point, we'll switch the second switch so that we're hooked. We're basically set to go into siding one. See that heads up display will tell you exactly where you're heading.
more juice. We don't want to go too fast through the yard here. You can see there's a train moving to our right there. So once we get past the turnout point, we'll make the switch back up, get those cars, and we'll be ready to roll. Should be pretty close here. Let's take a look. We're talking through here. One thing I do like about 360 controller is the ability, the way you can control the camera. Like, it's pretty cool. Just much smoother than using the mouse. See, there's right there. Oh, we're past it, so we can slow down here. Take care of our switching. See now that we have more cars in there, it takes, takes a little bit longer to get things rolling. We're all switched and ready to go, and uh, in a few moments here, we'll, we'll have our last, last set of freight cars on. one so we know we're good to go. You can start to see the set that we need to pick up there in the background. Yeah, I know there's a lot of downtime between hooking up cars and stuff, so don't mean to be too boring, but uh, that's part of playing the game. You know, see, some people think this game is boring. I think it's pretty cool. You know, all my life I always enjoyed trains. I've built model trains, and um, you know, from small from small layouts to large layouts. And this game actually gives you a feel for what it's like to operate a train, which is kind of cool. You know. Is it a fast-moving player game? Nope, but I think it, it really serves its purpose for those of us who are interested in operating real trains. So you can see the, the tanker car there we need to hook up to. We're going to take it slow. See the factory in the background there.
There's our coupling point. And once we're done with this, we'll move to siding one. And we'll be ready to roll. Almost there. Real slow. Come on. Come on. Come on. Yeah, that's a nice coupling. All right, so now we need to bring it on siding four, and we'll have completed the scenario. So while we're doing that, I wanted to talk about a few complaints I got about the crash videos that I've put up. So let me explain. Believe me, no one ever wants to see in real life a railroad crash of any type you know obviously no one ever wants to see that but this is a game and to me part of the fun of it is to see how the game reacts the physics of how the game reacts when you put it through different scenarios so the one that I did on the test track where we had where you had a um, high-speed um, head-on collision I wanted to see what would happen there's another one I have where there's a, a, a Union Pacific um, rail, a freight, freight train set up that after it crashes it flies through the air. I just wanted to see how the game reacts. So please understand, you know, those of you who, who think, think it was in poor taste to put up a crash, a train crash video, there's no ill intent or... Um, Believe me, I, no one ever wants, again, no one ever wants to see that happen in real life. But this is a game, right? It's like when you play NASCAR, right? Or whatever other video game you're playing that's a race, you know, racing game or whatever. Whenever vehicles are involved. Part of the interest is to see what it was, would be like if it crashes. Because it's not real life. It's just a game. So just mellow out and realize that, you know, there's no real intent there, okay? I hope you guys understand. I just wanted to get that off my chest. So now we're moving to siding four, um, and then we'll be done. You can see there we're okay to get on siding four. Just basically roll right out and in position on siding four. It tells you there in the white portion below the clock how far we have to go. And then we'll be completed. So again, this is a cool scenario for the, you're just starting out, you want to get the hang of playing the game and the controls and coupling and stuff like that. This is a good scenario to do. Again, 15 to 20 minutes and it really helps you learn how to use the controls. Get out of my way. I just did that, that to piss off the office workers. In that office building over there to the right. Back to the train crash videos. It's obvious that people like to see them because they get they get tons of views. So I'm going to keep on doing them and trying to find interesting scenarios that test the physics of the game, which is the whole intent. So, anyway, that, that's enough said on that. So we're almost to siding four here, and you'll see the signal come up on the bottom, heads up in a few seconds here. It'll show you how far away we are. There it is, right there on the right. So we'll goose it up a little bit get the train in position, bring it to a stop, and we'll be done. So it took me over 20 minutes to do it. I'm sure if I rushed through it and coupled faster, we could get through it in 15, but I was just taking my time, so...
Got a caboose in the end of that one. It's kind of cool. Don't see that today anymore. Remember when I was a kid, there was a freight train behind my house that um, a couple, about a half mile behind my house. We used to go up and watch the trains go by. They always had cabooses. Always someone in the caboose, so kind of missed the caboose. So here we are, we're done. Uh, we're set to go and uh, again, pretty cool scenario. Appreciate you watching the video today and I hope you enjoy all the Bambino game train videos. Uh, the idea is just to bring you an understanding of Train Simulator 2014. We'll have some other games too as they come along. I hope this was fun to watch. Hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel. We'll bring more to you and uh, have a great day.